Hello, welcome back. So, in the previous video, we did, I think, the implementation of orphan nodes. Yes. So, an orphan node basically is a node uh, not connected to anything. Uh, so, yes, we're serializing that. Uh, let me run the test, and everything looks good. We also have some login messages there going on, and that's pretty much it. So, the next step would be move on to the serialization of connected nodes. Uh, that's way more interesting. But uh, before going there, I feel like we need some cleanup. We need to do some cleanup in the code, some refactor. Simple stuff, but yes, it's needed. So I know that cleanup is not too sexy, but yeah, we need it. So <laughs> we're going to do that in this video. Uh, so let me start by the login. So, but uh, yeah, by default, we are logging everything, all the debug messages, as you can see there. And that was fine and when we had two tests, three tests, that's perfectly fine. But, oh, let me undo that. But if I look everything, where's my setup and two down? Our current situation, so let me run this test. The login is kinda annoying, right? It's a lot of it. So I'm going to fix that and now I want to be very explicit about what function I need to be logging the bug messages. So there are many ways to do it. Uh, I, I want to do it with a decorator. So I will, I will decorate the method uh, the, uh, showing the bug messages. Right, so I will remove the set level to login here and I will create a decorator. So I think that's yes. It's called the bug. So we're going to store the current level. So level is equal to logger that level. And then we're going to set this to the bug. So logger dot set level to logging dot the bug. And then we're going, we're going to run the function and then we're going to uh, restore the level. So logger set level. And this will be level now. Our backup. So that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. And if I run this, well, there's no logging going on, but if I go to, let's say, this function, and I decorate it, so debug, I run this, I have the debug messages for that test. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, what else? Well, the other thing is this test here. So this is a bit ugly. So we can do this in a different way. We're basically creating a graph with two nodes, serializing that, creating a new graph from the serialization, and then all we need is to check that both graphs are equal. So what I'm going to do is use uh, assert dict equal. Uh, this is it's pretty awesome. So it uh, check the quality of two dictionaries, and you can set like a maximum difference and there's a lot, of, well, there's more into it. But for now, let's say just compare two dictionaries. So I'm going to compare data with graph2.serialize. So this return a dictionary and we can do that. So let me run the test and now it's good. And actually you can see on the login, the first serialization and then the second one, um, both are the same, right? So it's kind of nice, easy way to do it. 
cool. Uh, what else? Well, uh, in our graph, we did this uh, property thing. So let me look for property, property. So we have that. So here we did this for the input port, but we didn't for the output port. So let me fix that. So this should be underscore output ports. And now I need to basically copy this. And this should be output ports. And this should be output ports. Oh, this with an underscore. So that should do it. Yes, we have all the tests passing. So that's good. Let me remove this. Cool. The other thing, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. So we have this add node, right? And this add node, well, it's it's there just for for testing, actually for testing purposes. But in reality, this is not a proper node, right? It works because we're just testing it with integers, but we haven't defined any data type or anything. So I'm going to move this to the test. Oh, <laughs> pretty sure this will break a lot of stuff, but yeah. So now let me look for digipy dot uh, add node, I guess. So I need to. Oh, that was bad. Oops. Uh, what I'm doing? Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. Can do that next. I'm just replacing cool. So all the tests are making a referencing this node now, which is local. And this point should be digipy dot point node. And I think that's pretty much it. So if I save this and I run the test, well and I save this. Oh we have an error. And the error is non type is not call callable so that's probably uh, let me run this again to see the line so line 21 59 so 59 so yeah so basically to get the nodes i'm looking at the globals and now at note it's not defined in the globals uh, of this file so looks like of course I will need to do a better solution for this but for now I will do a global variable yes <laughs> a global variable a dictionary and there will be a function called register node yes uh, we pass I don't know, a name and a node type. Uh, yes, so this should be node name and node type. And we basically say node, uh, node name equals to node type. So why I'm doing this? Because I probably will change this in the future. So I don't want to deal directly with the notes dictionary, right? It's, it's a way to, to have some more flexibility. I, I generally don't want to pass uh, multiple objects to the user. So in that case, this kind of, I don't know, it works for me. Uh, so now I can say yes, uh, yeah, 
So we need to do a few things. Oops, time's up. We need to register this node. So register. Register node. And we need to pass a name, which is void node. And the class, which is void node. And we need to do the same with the add node. So we register this to the main system. Add node. So now that we have that, instead of doing the global thing, I can say, okay, we'll do it like that for now. Save that and register node. Of course, this is digipy dot register node. So this is probably in the future. This will be running for every node in, you know, recursively under certain folder or whatever. But for now, that's fine. So if I run the test, everything's fine. But digipy is clean it's cleaner we don't have much crazy stuff here going on so there's a few more things yeah I would just go for it this video will be a little bit longer so yeah another thing that annoys me is when we use yeah let's do it here so when we need to get uh, so, uh, sorry, a test get together. So, let's say we create a graph, right? And this is graph equals to digipy dot graph, right? I don't care about the model. And let's say we create, we add a node, so graph dot add node, and we pass, how could, I don't even remember a name, so yeah, node one, and we pass a type, add node, yes, and that's it. So let's say we need a port now. I need to not known. Uh, the way to get it is kind of too long, basically, right? So right now we do graph dot uh, get node we pass the name and then we can say get input port and we pass the name and that's a port so that's kinda too long for me so I would love to do something like uh, so I know that it's a node one dot value one done that give me the port so the same for value two and the same for results. You know, like being able to get whatever from a, a long name or full name. So yeah, uh, maybe just note one that would be useful too. And maybe if we pass like foo, we want this to be none because there's no foo. So I feel like we need that. That would be useful, it's better. So if I run that, of course there's nothing. So yes, we need to implement a get. So yeah, just here. Definition get. Uh, self and full name and now okay so the full name is the node name dot the port name or just the node name so we are going to say I don't know split name would be equal to full name dot split and we split that without a dot 
node would be equal to self dot get node uh, we pass split name zero right so if there's a node uh, and split node and the length of a split name uh, yes, the length of this, what's wrong with the, okay, is equal to 2, for now, <laughs> we're going to look at the port, so port is equal to node dot uh, get input port, I think, there's, and we can pass split name one so if uh, not port of if port is known yeah like that port would be equal to node dot get output port and we pass split name one so if there's a port, uh, okay. So if if there's a port, I want to return that turn port. Otherwise, I want to return the nose. So I think that should do it. I think. Yes, that did it. So that's awesome. So the other thing we can do, <laughs> I know this video is going to be too long, but looks like we need a full name, like a proper implementation. So we can do it quickly, I guess. If we go to the port, where's the port class? Here. So we need a full name. Right, so we are going to do it here. So this is a property, and this is called full name. So yes, and the full name will be return dot dot join. I want to join self dot owner dot full name and. Uh, self that name right so now the nodes or the owner need a full name too so we can do it here for example and this will return well we'll return self that name for now because we don't have subgraphs uh, subgraphs and stuff like that so let me save this, let me run the test, that's good. So last step <laughs> for now. <laughs> so th th this looks good, uh, but an, a very important thing is the license. And um, I wanted to add some license to this. Uh, you know, this is, it's already in GitHub. So as it is just, let me explain this. When you have a when your project is composed by several files, it's totally recommended add a file called license, right? If I do a list here, let me. We have just two files at the moment, right? But if if there were more, and one of them is the test, so the test not needed to use DigiPy. So one of the goals for DigiPy is to be very generic and be like a drop-in that you can put in your in your project and use it as a base but you will have to implement the nodes and the context for the graph so in order to do that I want to keep it in one file okay, it would be big but I don't care so in that case I think it's better to include the license in the source code if it's a short license like MIT or something like that 
So I'm going to do just that. So let me add a few lines here. And let's add a MIT. This is Caesar. My name. And I will select all this stuff. So we have a license now. Uh, about licenses, well, there are many, many licenses and they have different meanings. Uh, MIT is very permissive, it's very, you can do whatever you want with the code and also I like it because it's very straightforward. So if you read this, there's no funny text, but depends on what you need, right? There's a, a lot of licenses to choose from and, and it's an important subject. So I recommend to everyone to you know, research a little bit on licenses because it, it, it's really important uh, in the long run. So uh, I'm, I'm happy with MIT for this one. So I wanted to do that. And I think we are, we are in, a good, in good shape to, to tackle the, the connected nodes and the reference counting and all that stuff. I think that, that would be fun. So yeah. Uh, yes, yes, let's move on and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.